jump and finish up with those fun statues and monuments uh, people are talking about here in Richmond. Uh, any thoughts on that since the Republican Party doesn't seem to be have a message on this at all? Conservatives? A, I, would, they, I would ask conservatives, what are you conserving? They, the, the message is let's, run, let, let's rerun the, the Gillespie 2017 campaign and see if it works this time. It's the definition of insanity. Mike. No, I, I mean, to DJ's point, it, it's incredibly stupid if we embrace Confederate monuments. I've said in my pieces, I do not understand why the Republican Party of Virginia is gaslit into absorbing former, you know, it's Democratic history. Democrats put them up. That, you know, if we're, if we are going through this historical purity contest and everything's being torn down, it's amazing that the, the gunfire hasn't been turned on on the Democrats. Um, but it is incredibly stupid to embrace Confederate monuments. We should support the good guys, not the bad guys, and that should be the stance on the statues. Chris? Yeah, um, I've, I'm pretty public about wanting to pull them all down. Um, they were put up, I mean, they, the, the idea that, the argument that keeps getting made is that we're erasing history. And the truth is that those monuments were the things that erased history. They erased what was actually going on in the Confederacy. They were put up during the time of Jim Crow. They were put up um, post Plessy versus Ferguson. They're put up during, you know, right around that time period where the Virginia General Assembly was um, passing anti-miscegenation laws. I mean, that's the time period that they belong to. They may be statues of Confederate generals, but they're monuments to Jim Crow. And when you look at it historically, as far as the timeline goes, um, Union Civil War monuments were put up about up until 1890 and Confederate ones were put up after because you put up monuments when you win. And the Confederate, the Neo-Confederates who outlasted uh, Reconstruction and then basically wore down the North and wore down Washington to say, hey, free reign, set up the racial caste system that you want. Those are the people who put these up. And they did it to build their own mythology. So when they're, def when they're being defended, that's the era we're defending, not the Confederacy. And so I say tear them down and I just don't understand how the party of Lincoln can be the party defending the Confederate monuments. Merle. I agree with Chris wholeheartedly. I mean, I would say we grandfather any Confederate uh, monument that was put up, uh, say, 10 years after, within 10 years after Reconstruction ended. That's it. <laughs> you know, the rest of it, Chris is exactly right. Uh, um, but uh, I would also uh, change a little focus and say, let's look at the monuments that were put up before, say, 1850. 1850. Uh, you know, this thing's kind of getting that a little out of hand, and I don't want to sound for a moment like I'm sympathizing with people who want to preserve artifacts of Jim Crow, which Chris has pointed out so ably. Uh, there, but when we start going after Andrew, uh, Jackson. Uh, we start going after Abraham Lincoln because we don't like the depiction of the slave that he's fred, uh, freed. Uh, when we now uh, we're going after Mount Rushmore, uh, uh, I, that that just baffles me. Uh, uh, I, I understand the Native American sentiment behind it, uh, but uh, I, I don't see how that's linked to monuments to the Confederate uh, past that go back to the Jim Crow days. So, my question is. And again, this sounds too much like a line that's used by the sympathizers and the apologists for the, Demo for the, the, the uh, um, Confederate monuments, but where's it going to end? Right, it's gotten a little out of hand, a little far afield there. Andrea and then Brian? I think that when they were put up, they were put up for a reason. They were put up during a different time. I, I think that right, the time we are in now doesn't resemble the time that they were put up. I, I, I think they should be put in museums. I think that correct history should be taught. But if they offend, deeply offend that much of the state, that many people, then we, they, they, we should take them down, put them in museums, and explain the real history behind the whole thing from both sides. Brian. I think Chris's point was spot on. I think, you know, the, the old adage is history is written by the victors. And I always add an asterisk, except the Civil War, because 
you know, we, the, the Southerners, and I consider myself a Southerner, we spent the next 50, 60, 70 years rewriting history to make ourselves look lo lo less bad. Uh, and the result is you had a whole generation of people, including me and, and, and folks before me, that were raised thinking, oh, well, this wasn't that big a deal. And, you know, the war wasn't about slavery. It was about states' rights and all that other kind of stuff. And it was all bogus. And it was all designed to, to paper over uh, the atrocities that we allowed to be committed in the name of the Constitution. So at least in terms of the, of the, of the statues, I don't have a problem with them coming down. My, my issue, well, two, twofold. My issue is, one, from a from a legal and 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 and, and law rule of law perspective, and I, I know saying rule of law is it, that can be a buzzword and 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 a, and a dog whistle to some people, but for me, I'm a lawyer. This is what I was trying to do. I look at it. We had a we have a process in place. The law protected these statues until last year, or at least until I guess it was earlier this year. We changed the law. We still put a process in that would allow localities to pull these statues down after a, after a referendum and after a public hearing and after a vote of the city councils and things like that. My big issue with what's happening in Richmond is that the, the mayor has just decided he's going to throw all that out the window. I'm just going to pull these down and try to stop me. And I think that's damaging to, to the fabric of democracy and to the government. And it also, it, it throws all the stuff out the window of saying, hey, you know, guys, we're, we're, we're going to let you, we're going to let the people work their will to take these statues down. Uh, but the people never had a chance to, to do that through their elected representatives. I think everybody on that city council would love to take a vote to take those down. And they're never, they're not going to, probably aren't going to get that opportunity at least until after the fact, after it was already, already a fait accompli. And the only other thing I would say is all of the statues in Richmond, you want to take them all down, that's fine. There's only one that I, I think people need to be especially careful of. And that's the AP Hill Monument, because that's his grave site. I mean, he's buried there. And I don't want us, I mean, I understand the desire to make sure that we are not glorifying, you know, the Confederacy, but that's his tomb, you know, let's, let's be respectful of that at least. Yeah, whenever I'm asked, this great, great conversation, great comments all, whenever I'm asked about it, I'm like, well, as a, as a legislator, would I vote to put them up? No. Would I, would I fund money to keep, keep them up and maintain them? No. And to Brian's point, the lawlessness has been the, the, the biggest concern for me, uh, the mob rule here, uh, the, the easily pushed around administration in Richmond, quite frankly, uh, trying, to, trying to get ahead of the political uh, re-election uh, for mayor, get ahead of one of the, the council candidates. Uh, it's been unseemly at best. Um, I don't think people are going to miss that they're not there anymore in three or four years. They're going to be like, so what? Uh, but I do think to, to the point of studying history, we've missed a tremendous opportunity to draw the parallels to the, to the uh, unraveling of reconstruction and bad political deals and what that means long term as a former history teacher and, and a stud, student of history. I think we've, we've lost a tremendous opportunity to draw the parallels of, 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 of a bad political compromise uh, following the Civil War and, uh, and with reconstruction. And <laughs>